Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am here fresh face because I am here to do a foundation review and this is the Sephora Make No Mistake Foundation and Concealer Stick. Now, I was just in Sephora because I actually was looking for a mask and stuff. I do have a haul video coming for you guys, but I came across this. Sephora has been doing really good, in my opinion, with some of the stuff that they've coming out, some of their lipsticks. Um, I heavily use their color correcting concealers. Their um, concealers actually in general have been really good. So I was surprised to see this. Um, there were, I think it was like 22 shades or something like that. I'm not really sure. If I mess that up, I'll correct it. But I think it's like 22 shades and I saw one, two, three, four, five. I saw like five darker shades and um, they were kind of off and I, I'll say that because I got number 13 walnut I got 13 as opposed to 14 because 14 had red undertone you know what I'm gonna read it to you guys I got 13 because 14 was teak and teak has is a rich tan with a red undertone and the walnut is a medium tan with an olive undertone Honestly, I'm not really sure what it looked like. I tried it on in Sephora, but I did not step outside. And I, I now that I think about it, I should have done that. So we will be testing this out together. But while I'm here, it is medium coverage. It claims to be good for all skin tones. It's a matte finish. It's a medium to full coverage foundation and concealer with a natural matte finish. So I'm going to use my Real Techniques sponge just sprayed a little bit of my elf mist and set on it I'm gonna be priming my face with the professional benefit professional matte rescue I'm I decided not to do like a straight test to my skin because I wouldn't wear the foundation without a primer so I decided might as well prime my face for it I got some makeup wipes if I need to take this off and let's just talk about how it comes. It comes in this tube, simplistic packaging, probably great for traveling. It's just a twist up and that is the color. Um, instead of swatching it on my hand, I'm just going to swatch it on my face. Actually that's not, it's not too bad. All right, let's see how this blends in with my finger. Mm. Actually, I don't. Th I think this might be the an okay color for me. Normally, I would not blend with my finger because this just takes like entirely too much time. So I am actually gonna switch to my sponge. It's supposed to also be a concealer, so I didn't color correct. These are the areas of my face where I am particular about. So let's see what it does. I'm probably putting a little too much on, but that's fine. I can say that as I'm putting it on my face, I can actually really feel the foundation. And I'm going to use my foundation brush. Uh, it's the e.l.f. Foundation Blurring Brush. Hmm not really moving very well with my foundation brush the direction said I could use a foundation brush but I'm guessing maybe they meant um, a flat one because I have to pat it in and as I'm looking at the camera it appears this might not be my color so this might be going back to Sephora but the other one was just so red that I that wouldn't have worked either I mean as far as concealing I think it's concealing very very well like concealer wise I like it a lot color wise I'm looking a little white casty especially on camera like in person it is not as bad as it looks on camera and for anybody who wants to know this is natural lighting I am sitting right in front of my window and it is like the middle of summer in the middle of the afternoon so I have some of the best lighting that I could possibly get for this video and I'm still blurring it out 
I kind of had to do a lot of work with the blurring because it was kind of thick. Like I had to do a lot of rubbing. I can feel the foundation on my face. It kind of feels like I'm wearing a mask. Um, I don't know if that bothers people, but I kind of like the weightless effect of foundation. So me personally, I don't like that feeling. Okay, so I blended it out. I don't think it looks too bad, but concealer wise, I think it covered up the spots on my face. It didn't conceal, like it concealed the dark spots around my mouth. Like I think concealer wise, I think it really did do what it said. And I think if I were to put more on, it would be the full coverage. Like it's full coverage pretty much right now. The only part that's not full coverage is right underneath my eyes. And that's because I didn't put any underneath my eyes because it's really thick and I felt with my foundation brush I had to do a lot of rubbing and I don't want to do all of that underneath my eye like I would rather just pat it in so this is what I look like without mascara just foundation and I put the foundation on underneath my eyes on top of my eyes and my face hi guys I'd like to welcome you guys back again as this is actually a continuation it is actually 125 on the next day because I got in pretty late last night and I did not feel like setting up lighting so that you guys could see everything that was going on so I figured I would just come on here today and talk about this foundation again because um, I wore the foundation last night I'm gonna insert um, my snapchats because I also forgot to show you guys the final look or whatever, but I'm gonna input my Snapchat uh, video so you guys can see, but the makeup to me looks good. Um, I set it with my, last night I set it with my Makeup Forever foundation, which of course you guys know is one of my favorites, um, but I think around like 12.30 midnight, I finally ended up in some, some decent lighting. And I just looked, I put it on my Snapchat and this entire area, like the middle of my nose, this and this, like all of my T-zone was, was shook. So I never just blame just the foundation, hair, I never just blame the foundation for my T-zone because that is the area of my face that's always very problematic and it was rather humid last night. So I did kind of expect that to happen. Um... I blotted my face a couple of times last night. So I wore my makeup because I redid my face before I went out. So I wore it for about five hours and that was how shiny my nose was. Um, as far as how it felt, um, I still feel like I'm wearing a mask. I have it on today. Um, I personally just don't like medium to full coverage foundation for this reason. Um, surprisingly, even though I have you know the Kat Von D and things of that in Urban Decay where they can be more full coverage I don't feel those the way that I feel this one on my face um as far as the matte capability of this foundation I feel like maybe I don't really understand how cream foundations work but I didn't feel like this foundation on its own was very matte I felt like to make it matte I needed powder so um, today I did something, I used my Black Opal True Color Soft Velvet Finishing Powder on my, um, under or on top of this instead of my compact. And I feel like this makes it look so much better. Like I can't stop looking at it. It looks so smooth and like so nice. Like this is without a filter y'all like or editing or anything. And it just looks really smooth and really nice. I will say that, um... I used my CoverGirl bronzer and I just feel like it did not really go well with this cream foundation. So I'm actually maybe might um, look at the Black Radiance Cream Contour Kit and see like would the cream work better with this foundation. I'm not really sure. As far as whether or not I would buy this foundation again, I feel like for a cream foundation, I might stick to my Black Opals 
because I do have the black opal stick foundations and those things are awesome. Granted, right now I'm in between two black opal colors. So I guess while I'm in between two black opal colors, I can stick to this because this is my actual shade. I don't have to mix anything, but um, I think I'm still going to stick to my black opal. Not saying that this is a bad brand. I actually like it. I like the coverage. It's weird feeling cream crayon stick thing. It blends very, very well with um, thicker brushes and like beauty blenders. It takes forever to blend with your finger. I don't recommend you doing that. I did not try a flat foundation brush. I completely forgot to try that. But I used a beauty blender and um, the e.l.f. foundation blurring brush. So those are the two that I used, but I'm not saying these are bad. I'm saying it's actually pretty decent. I've been wearing my foundation today for about two hours, I think. And like you can see my, my smile lines, but I've yet to figure out how to fix those. And underneath my eyes look pretty good. Oh, I used shape tape today as opposed to my NARS concealer. And... I think my NARS concealer looks better on top of the foundation than the shape tape. But yeah, so have you guys tried this foundation? Um, they do have a full coverage concealer also, but the reason that I did not get it, because they did have the shades that I was looking at, um, this claims to be foundation and concealer. So this is that one-stop shop. Oh, that's another thing. This is really a good one-stop shop uh, situation. I did not have to use um, my normal orange concealers at all. Even around my um, my mouth area where it, I have darker spots right here and right here, I did not have to conceal. So if you do like one-stop shops, this is one to go for. All right guys, so that is my first impression kind of wear test for you guys. As usual, please check the description box down below for information to my blog, other videos, and to all my new subscribers again. Hi guys! Thank you so much for checking out my channel and until the next time guys, bye!